calling it the Oktoberfest vlog to talk to you guys a little bit about things that I learned from being at Oktoberfest for my very first time and also going solo to Oktoberfest. The things that I did learn from other people and through experience was really helpful. So if I ever want to go back to Oktoberfest in the future, it will go so much more smoothly. And as a woman, I really felt liberated going on my own, I really stepped out of my comfort zone. I heard that six million people come to Oktoberfest every single year, which is a lot. This year, in 2023, it went from September 16th to October 3rd, and I got to go to the very last day of Oktoberfest. I was so happy that I made it work. It is such a once-in-a-lifetime experience that if you do have the opportunity, go. I have a little list of my Oktoberfest tips. I'm going to walk through those with you. Hey you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. This is NK. Subscribe if you are new here. Let's go to Germany. If you're coming from the Paris vlog, welcome back. We're only in Germany for less than 48 hours, but I decided why not? Why not just take these opportunities as they come? Go to a country I've never been to and cross off another place that's been on my bucket list. I also get to go to Oktoberfest tomorrow. I'll be going for the very last day, which is October 3rd. And I'm so happy and I'm so excited about it. I'm also taking the train to Germany. It's about a six hour train ride and I can't wait to take you guys along. Let's go to Germany. I just got to the hostel, stayed in hostels so many times over the course of years. This is the first time I'm staying in a hostel in like four years. If you're in a city or country for a short period of time and you want to save money, I definitely recommend looking into hostels. It's also a really great way to meet people if you want to socialize, but then you can also do your own thing too. I'm staying at the Wombat City Hostel. Right now it's 6 p.m. I'm going to go get food. I'm starving. I've not eaten all day. Now we are going to go explore a little bit of Germany. I just wanted something very flowy. This is what I wore on the train. It's a nice maxi skirt, my sambas, a little sweater, and my tote bag for walking around for my sunglasses. Let's go explore Germany. I'm honestly really excited to be here. I've never been to this country. You know, I get to cross off this off my bucket list, which I'm really happy about. <laughs> Germany. The plan is to go get lunch and walk around and roam around, take some content. We're gonna go to Oktoberfest in the afternoon, evening. Full disclosure, I don't feel 100%. Like I have a sore throat, so I'm definitely trying to make sure I'm taking care of myself. I took medicine, I took liquid IV, I took my AG1. I slept for 10 hours. I definitely just need to go get food and take it easy and we'll see how I feel, but I'm definitely gonna go to Oktoberfest. That's the point of being here. I also just wanna walk around and see the actual city. This is my outfit white tank top, denim skirt, my sambas. I got a peppermint tea with honey because they do not do the medicine bell tea in Germany. You learn new things. So I'm drinking this. I also got a breakfast sandwich, but didn't really feel like eating all of it. I only ate like a quarter of it. It's in my bag. <laughs> and we're just walking around now. beforehand. What I mean specifically by that is drink electrolytes. As you guys know, electrolytes are amazing sources of hydration. You can get electrolytes in a lot of different things. Pedialyte is a very common one. Liquid IV, Element, there's so many different types. I like to pack liquid IV packets everywhere I travel. Definitely the morning that I am planning on drinking because obviously drinking dehydrates you and obviously Oktoberfest is a big drinking event. I will be honest, I am a little self-conscious because I brought an outfit for Oktoberfest, but I feel like it's too short and that makes me feel some type of way. I'm so excited to go 
I went with the green and the red. It's kind of giving Christmas, but I like it. I need to braid my hair as well. Right now it's around 4 p.m. I'm gonna get a beer, get a pretzel, walk around, maybe go on the Ferris wheel. Not everybody dresses in the traditional outfits of Oktoberfest. However, if you do want to really send it and really do the full experience, I would recommend getting the traditional outfit. So for women, I'm gonna speak from the woman's perspective because I am a woman, it is called the dwindle. Do not make the mistake that I did. I feel like I have to be honest for the vlog. I purchased an outfit prior to going to Oktoberfest did not do my research. I got there the day before I went to Oktoberfest. I was walking around. I see everyone in their traditional, beautiful drindles. And I was getting so much anxiety. There is no way that I'm wearing what I brought. One, I don't want to misappropriate their culture because I never want to do that. I don't think that's right. And then also I was just getting really self-conscious because what I had brought really, it wasn't the vibe. It wasn't what I, would or should wear and i did not wear it i didn't even pull it out of my suitcase if you want to do it right get a drindle ladies i believe you can search that on amazon what i ended up doing took the morning when i was at oktoberfest and i went shopping it was really fun to get to try them on in munich germany and then get to walk out with it. Another amazing thing about getting it there is that the ladies who grew up in the culture, they really educate you more on the significance of the outfits, where they come from, the symbolism, which I really appreciated and I'm really happy that I had that experience. The drindles definitely range in price. There are some really extravagant ones and then there are some that are very basic. Knowing that I was only there for one literal day, I didn't want to spend too much money, but I still wanted to have one that I really liked, something I can use as a keepsake. Mine ended up being 60 euros and that was for the drindle and then I had a white little top that perfectly matched the outfit and it was really nice because the woman who was helping me, she actually tied it for me. The way that you tie your apron symbolizes if you are single versus married. So definitely make sure you have yours on the right side. When you're in Oktoberfest, when you're in the tents, when you're being social, when people are talking to you, they look at that. The people who speak fluent German and are in the culture, they pick up on that very quickly. It's definitely a conversation starter. <laughs> Large bags are not allowed on the premises. I had a smaller tote bag and it definitely depends on the person who's checking your bag. As a rule of thumb, if you want to bring a bag, bring a little fanny pack, bring a clear bag because they will be searching your, your bag. I didn't even have a lot of stuff in my tote bag so I think that's what helped is that I had a tote bag but there was barely anything in it. <laughs> Bring 50 euros cash minimum. Most of the vendors are cash only. You definitely want to make sure that you are ready and stocked up with cash so that you're able to pay for beers, the food. Some of the rides that are there are also cash only. A lot of people definitely bring way more cash than that and that's completely fine. I found in my personal experience of being a solo gal there, I took out 50 euros flat and that was exactly how much I needed. I actually didn't even use the entire thing at Oktoberfest, but I feel like 50 euros is a perfect amount of money to go in there with if you're going solo. For example, some of the food ranges from five to 10 euros. The beers are 15 euros each. You can really plan ahead to figure out, okay, how many beers do you think you want? Also water is definitely, definitely overpriced. I actually learned that in Germany as a whole, the price of water is significantly higher. Wherever you go, you will be paying at least 3.5 euros for a bottle of water, which is so expensive. Definitely keep that in mind as well. The other thing I actually wanna say about water in general is that no outside liquid and water is allowed in Oktoberfest. Your bag will get checked. You cannot bring anything liquid or water inside the festival. Once you're in Oktoberfest, you cannot bring liquids or water from each 
tent with you. They're very big on those restrictions. These are things that, again, I didn't know this until right before I got there. I'm here telling you guys this so you can prepare. local foods they are so good one thing i knew prior to going there is that i wanted three things i wanted to have the german beer but aside from the beer i wanted a pretzel because that is very big in germany and then i wanted bratwurst i got all three of those things so i'm very happy about that the bratwurst was a really yummy hot dog it was literally this big it was humongous i enjoyed that so much and they had really good mustard as well sunscreen in that climate in that area and especially on that day it was very very hot close to 90 degrees that day i ended up going later in the day you should definitely be wearing sunscreen every single day to protect yourself from uv rays and then you should also be reapplying sunscreen and that is something that you can definitely bring in your tote bag and that's not something that's going to get thrown out i recommend going to oktoberfest in the late afternoon early evening i know myself well enough to know that i cannot drink super early in the day or i will crash i also wanted to stay there for a good amount of hours especially because it was the only day that i was going to go i went at 4 30 and i stayed until 10 p.m that's my recommendation to go later in the day and then stay until the nighttime. That's where most of the crowd comes from anyway. Let's talk about the tents. I did not do that much research. So again, this is why I'm telling you guys all this now so you can prepare because I went into this whole experience pretty blind. People were talking about the tents of Oktoberfest. When you think of a tent, I can envision a white tent. With the wind, it blows a little bit, but it's a tent that you just go grab the beer and then walk out. No, that's the complete opposite of what's happening here. These tents are quite literally big buildings. Think of a big barn times three. These are huge, massive buildings. There are a lot of them. I did do some research and I learned that there are 17 large tents. Keep that in mind. This place is huge. I didn't realize it was that big but it really is that big. Just for terminology's sake, I want to let people know who don't know, the tents are actually big buildings. Each one houses different types of beer. I was excited because I heard that there are beers at Oktoberfest that you can only get at Oktoberfest. You cannot get them anywhere else in the world. Each tent name is the name of the beer. Now onto the tent that you should go into. If you're new and you don't even know the names of anything or what, because I did not. I walked in, I walked to a food stand and I struck up conversation with one of the ladies who was definitely from the culture and she knew what she was talking about. And I was like, hey, I'm from New York. I'm here by myself. Do you have a recommendation on what tent I should go into? I just point blank asked her. And she was really sweet and she let me know, you would really like the HB tent. There's a way longer name for it. If you say HB there, everyone will know what you're talking about. The HB tent is known to mostly attract tourists. A lot of people from the US go there. there also are a lot of Germans who are there as well. So you get really the mix of both worlds. Feel comforted because you know people who speak English in there, but then also people who are immersed in the culture. And I struck up a lot of conversations with people who were from Germany who speak English but are from Germany born and raised and learned about their culture, which that is the literal point of Oktoberfest to be social, meet new people and have fun. In any case that you're in when you're traveling, definitely be aware of who's around you, be aware of what you're holding, 
any personal possessions you have. At Oktoberfest, I found that as people get more intoxicated, more things tend to happen, which are not great. Trust your intuition too. If you feel like someone's being a little much or creepy or whatever, definitely let someone know that either works there or someone who you have connected with that you trust, so they can help facilitate the situation. <laughs> They also have rides there. It is literally an adult carnival. That is the best way I can describe Oktoberfest. This is really for adults. Yes, there were a lot of kids there with their families and stuff, but adults will thrive there. Adults do thrive there. I thrived there. I had such an amazing time. I went on the Ferris wheel. I went on this other ride called the Hangover. Wear comfy shoes. Cannot stress this enough. I clock eight miles in five hours. You would think, how does that even happen? And it does. You are drinking, you are being social, running around, going on rides. Someone said it's the biggest outdoor beard hall in the world. You will be walking a lot. You won't even think about it. You will be walking miles and miles and miles. I wore my New Balance shoes, which are Honestly, the most comfortable shoes I own, and I'm so happy I did. Wear comfy shoes because your feet will thank you later. That is my tips, tricks of the trade. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that this video was super informative. I hope that it helped you in some way plan for your next Oktoberfest or get ideas of what to consider for Oktoberfest. I'm so happy that I went. Very much looking forward to making more videos like this in the future. I will see you guys in my next video.